Hi guys, welcome to honeystocks.com weekend analysis for the 14th of December 2019. Now, as I record this video from rainy Vancouver, I'm in Canada for ski season. I'm learning to snowboard at the moment in between all my uh, charting and all my analysis. So um, it's actually pissing down with rain at the moment outside. It's a very bleak Vancouver afternoon. So hello, I think this is the first time that many of you will have actually seen me present on camera. Um, it's taken a long time for me to be able to kind of do this. A lot of you won't know, but I actually suffer from a little bit of social anxiety. Presenting causes problems uh, when you consider that I've consulted for the likes of Deloitte, Lloyds Banking Group, and made it to quite high level positions, but not having the ability to present because of this anxiety. Um, this is the first time I've been able to do it. It's taken many hundreds of attempts, but here we are. Um, so. What I want to do is really just run through the, um, the charts for the forthcoming week. Uh, I have around 15 to 20 charts that I think um, should be on your radar and I think they warrant a little bit of due diligence. Um, as always, everything's completely backed up with technical analysis. I think for those of you that have followed me for long enough, you all understand that technical analysis is what I'm widely known for. Uh, technical analysis is my thing, it's my life, and um, I like to think I do it more logically than others. So um, rather than obviously ramble on a little bit, I think what I'll need to do is just kind of get into the charts. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into the charts. Uh, and yes, all my friends have got in the Harry Potter jokes already, so it's, it's all good. So um, let's get into the charts. Now before I get into this, as always, please just pause the video, make sure you're comfortable with that, there's not any recommendations, there's not any investment advice, I'm sure most of you know the drill by now, but if this is your first time here, please do pause the video, make sure you're comfortable with that. To maybe give myself a little bit of credibility, I'm registered with the CMT Association. I'm working my way towards my chartered status at the moment, technical analysis, like I said a minute ago, is what I'm widely known for. So hopefully you get a lot of insight from this. Now, if you're somebody that um, struggles a little bit, shall we say, maybe you just feel like you can't catch a break or the luck's never with you, you can stick around for a couple of minutes at the end if you like. And we have uh, an incredible Christmas special offer that we're just announcing today. So that might be worth just um, adding to the radar. Uh, if you do enjoy this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're more than welcome. And um, please do give the video, like I said before, a thumbs up, like, share it. If you're on social media, please do share the video on your, your page, whatever it is that you do, maybe stock twits or something. It all helps. Um, like I said, big announcement, Christmas special. And um, yeah, let's dive into the charts. Now, um, where I really want to start with actually is with the relative comparison chart just to kind of show you where you should be looking in the market now what i've really done here is try to break it down for you um, now if we understand that the s p 500 is the benchmark for the market what we need to be doing is identifying the areas of the market that will enable us to outperform the market now areas that you should have been looking this year Certainly I pay, so you're looking at the payment processing companies, uh, MasterCard, Visa, that, that type of thing. You've got tech and also you've got semiconductors. Now obviously there's a few more areas, but what I've tried to do is just kind of break it down. If you're somebody that's been playing around in these areas of the market, it's very, very difficult. What you need to be doing as, as a, a trader, just in general, and not just a trend following trader, is just identifying the strength in the market and just identifying the individual components of the, the areas in which you, you want to have exposure to. Now, areas at the moment of a lot of interest. Now, this is the relative rotation graph. Now, if we think about the market as one big rotation, we we all, I'm sure, have heard that 
sector rotation is the lifeblood of any bull market. Now, this just helps us to identify, you know, what we can look to anticipate. Now, we can clearly see that biotechs at the moment are starting to move into the leading areas of the market. We already know that semiconductors have been massively outperforming. Financials are really starting to, to motor now. We've got tech. Um, and these are areas at the moment that have been performing very, very well recently. Now, obviously, we know that IP has, has struggled a little bit recently, the payment processing. But over the course of the last 12 months, that's certainly been an area that we've wanted to, to, to have exposure to. We can see that the cloud-based tech companies are, are obviously starting to improve. Um, yes, I accept that they obviously had a bit of a car crash earlier in the week. But over the, the piece, they, they do look like they are starting to move into these leading areas. So that's positive, in my opinion, for the, the strength of the overall market. Um, now, I have touched on this chart for the last couple of weeks, and I do think we are a little bit overextended. If we think about the overall market and how it performs when we get an overextension, and, and when I say overextension, what I'm really looking at here is a 30 period weekly moving average. And we can clearly see that when we do get a certain level above the the green line there, we do get a return back to the mean. And this is really what we're seeing here. So when we look at price now, it kind of has the look of having that overextension. So I think although there were certain areas of the market that had a decline um, recently, I, I don't think that is the decline. That's the, the one thing to say. So it'll be interesting to see what happens up until Christmas. What I would say is if we do see what we've seen last year where we just got a huge sell-off in the run-up to Christmas, what you really need to be doing is just managing risk. Um, that's the key to it all. Um, we are in a bull market. I, I don't really see any massive signs that we're going to be looking at a correction anytime soon. Um, however, if we get a pullback and we see these support levels start to break down, we'll always revisit our thesis. Um, at the moment, I think we can buy any weakness in the market. But certainly, like I said, it's a constant re-evaluation. We take things week by week at honeystocks.com. We don't get married to our stocks. We don't get married to our thesis. We're constantly asking ourselves, what if we're wrong? Um, and this is something that, that I think um, works very, very well, especially with an index like the S&P 500. Clearly, there are many, many more areas of the market that we need to consider. But if we consider that the S&P 500 is, is obviously one of the, the leading areas of the market, we just need to keep an eye on it. Now, um, I sent this out to, to social media. It's very rare that I will post a trade alert to social media. Um, just for full and open disclosure, you know, Starbucks is a, a stock I, I've got position in at the moment. But what I did 24 hours ago was I sent this chart out to my client group and, and obviously my subscribers all received this chart as a, a trade alert. But for the first time in a long time, I actually decided um, after a couple of beers actually um, to send this out to, to my social media channels as well. And I want to just thank everybody that, that reached out and um, thank me for it. I'll thank you back for taking the time out of your day. But really what I'm seeing here with, with Starbucks is we've got a breakout here. Now, for those of you that don't know, I actually sent a, a trade alert out to my guys also on Starbucks down here at around $81. Now, it's obviously started to motor. We're up, I think, 9 10%. It's been incredibly profitable for my options guys, obviously for you know my guys that have bought the stock also. It's performing very, very well. But... I do see this moving towards $100 uh, through the function of time. Yes, we'll always deal with little pullbacks, but there are little tools that we can use to, to extract maximum profit from every trade. I'm not really in the stock market for little $1 or $2 moves. I, I don't see the point in that. I really want to be in it for you know, $20, $30, $100 moves. Um, 
that's where the big money is really made, especially when you look at options. So um, Starbucks, that's an area that I think warrants a lot of strong consideration at the moment. Um, Disney just hasn't had the follow through, unfortunately. $150 resistance is proving to be a bit of a hurdle here. We could also look at it like we're, we've had a breakout followed by a retest um, around the 145 mark. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens here. I think for Disney though, I think for me, I would be bullish on Disney above $150 and hopefully we can get that continuation and follow through um, that can just give us that peace of mind that the stock is going to do what we, we all want it to do. Um, I've been asked a lot about Okta this week, just purely, I think, because of the, the declines that we had in the market. Um, yeah, this is a logical area of support, guys. This is a, a support area that quite a few of my, my clients have, have jumped on to. Obviously, the one thing to say about these cloud-based tech momentum stocks is they are absolutely incredible when the stock is going up. I think we can all accept that. But what you have when it's going up, you can multiply 100 times when it's coming down and reversing against you. It's very, very frustrating. Um, but I think with Okta, I think we can be bullish above this 200 MA. Um, I think what we're seeing here is uh, obviously support. And obviously what we need now is continuation Monday, Tuesday. And hopefully this can start to move back uh, towards 140. Uh, AYX unfortunately has broken support levels. Um, I highlighted this one uh, over the last couple of weeks and presented a thesis that we may, we may, be, may be looking at an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Now that, that hasn't necessarily been ruled out, but what I am naturally cautious of now here is that we're going to get a, re a retest of this $85 level. And I think a breakdown below that, I think if you're in AYX at the moment, I think these are the levels to pay attention to. I obviously have no position in this stock. So if you're out there, you're in AYX, I, I completely hope that the thing turns around and you can go on and, and make your money. I, I think if you consider that a lot of the cloud-based tech stocks are starting to get that rotation and there are a couple of them that, that are showing signs of weakness unfortunately AYX is one of them but there's many others that will hopefully drag the underperformers along for a ride so that's the hope with AYX at the moment. Um, Nike has um, broken out again um, so this is a, a, a stock that I sent a, a trade alert out to my guys around $91 we're obviously up at 98. We've all had a, a re-evaluation at this point. It's, it's broken out again. So $100 is the next re-evaluation point. Um, you want to be staying in this trade for as long as it's paying, guys. That's the bottom line. I think if you break out above $100, that might be a, a an area where if you're looking to add new money to the stock, then that might be a, a logical area to do so. Um, but I think re-evaluating on $100 just kind of seems logical to me. Uh, Match Group has got the look of breaking out here. Quite a strong uh, move on Friday. Um, so it's, it's moved above the 200-day simple moving average. So it'll be interesting to see if we get follow through on this next week. What I would say is I don't know if this is necessarily... Uh, a breakout that I would take at this exact moment in time um, but maybe Monday, Tuesday we may see the required um, momentum and volume come in and we'll, we'll, we'll reevaluate things then. PayPal is testing its resistance level again. We know the more times a resistance or support level is tested the more likely it is to break. Um, Looks like it's a bit of an ascending triangle pattern also. So if we can get through that 110 level, I, I would suggest that this is probably going to start to move towards 120 in pretty short order. I think we've got EHTH. This is one that's been talked about to death. Um, this is one that one of my one of my guys has, has got in way down here and it is absolutely motoring for them. Um, highlighted it a couple of weeks ago on this breakout and 
it's still going guys like i said before you want to be in the trend for as long as it's paying if you're in options on this and you've bought enough time this is absolutely massive um so again you want to be in the stock you want to be accumulating on it it's not necessarily offering an optimal entry at the moment but if you're in there and you're in eHTH um, I would be keeping an eye keeping an eye on $100 and certainly you know 110 is the upside target there um, Netflix to what feels like the hundreds of you that keep asking me about Netflix nothing has changed we're in a consolidating pattern here we're trading in the middle of no man's land um, it's a complete lottery if you're buying in here I would suggest that you might want to rethink your approach a little bit to the market now I'm not talking about fundamentals um, fundamentals if you're a fun fundamental guy or girl I'll leave that game to you um, but if we're talking purely about the technicals this makes absolutely no sense buying in here just my two cents um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight I think trade desk I think there's a logical upside target I don't think anything's changed here I think you can look you know 280 maybe 290 um, would be the area that you would want to, to kind of aim for there Twilio close to breaking out my thesis has not changed above $100 and this is a stock that, that I probably like very very much so I'll be keeping an eye on that one Square Inc is still being a bit of an asshole um, I highlighted this one last week and just said you know wh what are we going to see here is this a breakout or is this going to continue to, to just play silly games with us and yeah again the, the chart is just not appealing anymore guys I, I know there's many of you that are married to the stock I know that there's many of you that have been holding for the last 12 months because you bought in too high up here I, I totally get it um, but if you're looking to allocate new money to the stock market I think I've probably highlighted f quite a few other stocks that are um, far more appealing than this chart um, Electronic Arts again $110 is the level I think above that I think there's a 40% upside um, Adobe has broken out now I'm not convinced by this one at this exact moment in time I think there are a couple of concerns with that breakout namely um, volume is one of them um, so I don't know if that's necessarily a breakout that I would want to take at this moment in time but um, it has broken out those of you that are in there you know congratulations I think that's the first thing to say um, allocating new money again I think there's better better charts out there uh, to allocate to so the guy that was asking me about ALGN um, again it's very very difficult with this one because there's not any real structure to this chart you know if, if you compare this chart to, to you know something like EHTH or you know PayPal or Nike you, you can see the structure with something like ALGN I, I think what you just have to say is you're bullish above the 200 MA so around $250 I think you just say you're bullish above it if it drops below that level you might want to rethink what you're doing with the position um, but it has had a, a huge move recently completely accept that it's probably just taking a little bit of a breather before the next leg up uh, but you do always have to be mindful of where the, the blind spots are on the chart um, American Airlines is one that's in a downtrend channel again it's not particularly appealing there was a couple of you that were asking about this this week um, look at the chart it's not appealing if you're shorting the chart or you're looking to take puts um, I could kind of see why um, but for me I wouldn't be looking to buy the stock in here perhaps on a breakout maybe above $31 um, might be more appealing but again I think there's better options out there um, Boeing however is nearing uh, a move in either direction something's got to give in the next week or two I think huge triangle pattern and when this moves either to the upside or the downside it's going to be a huge reaction um, so uh, Boeing I would suggest if it's not on your radar at the moment I think it, if you're someone that doesn't mind paying a little bit more money for your stocks maybe for the 
the cost of the options, etc. You know, absolutely that this is one that you you maybe want to keep an eye on. Um, this is is gearing up for a, a bit of a move. Um, Win Resorts has broken out this week for new money. It doesn't make a lot of sense. There's not the risk to reward proposition, but. I think you do need to be mindful of the, the levels where you might want to reevaluate what's going on. Um, I think those levels are 140 and 152, maybe 151. Um, but yeah, when to the chap that was asking me this week, congratulations on, on getting on in this breakout. Um, but you know, those are the levels that, that I think warrant a lot of consideration. Uh, good old Mr. Roku. Um, what can I say about Roku? Um, not for the faint-hearted. It's um, a little bit too volatile for my liking. Um, yeah, I think you just need to be mindful here, guys. I think breaking below this level here, this level does look like it might hold a bit of weight. Um, so yeah, be very, very careful Monday, Tuesday. I think you can stay bullish above this level. Below this level, I would I would have reservations, and I probably wouldn't look to to take many chances with that one. Um, and energy, Conical Phillips. Now looks like we're getting close to a breakout here. Now this would be big for energy. Um, so I'm I'm actually interested in this chart. Not necessarily that I want to take a position. But it's an area of the market that I think has massively underperformed this year. When, when you look at the energy sector uh, relative to um, the S&P 500, for example, it's just not performed at all. So I think if we can get a breakout here in ConocoPhillips, then that might be a catalyst here. And you might want to start to kind of look at, you know, companies like Exxon, etc. And, and maybe take a closer look at XLE, do a little bit of due diligence, build a bit of analysis and, and just kind of see what things look like. So I'm keeping an eye on Conical Phillips at the moment and hopefully that just kind of explains why I'm doing that. Now, like I said before, if you are somebody out there that is struggling, maybe you maybe want to accelerate your learning curve, maybe you're hunting around YouTube, maybe you're trying to just pick up trade ideas, etc. I'm going to walk you through just what it is that I do. Um, so this offer is going to end on Boxing Day. Now, for those of you that picked up um, a few weeks ago, I ran the, the Black Friday offer and there was a massive uptake on that. Um, and a lot of you have been asking when you can get in, when I'm going to be doing my next offer. Now, th this is obviously going to be the, the last offer um, for quite some time. So for those of you that have been wanting to kind of get in, um, have access to my charting, my trade ideas, this is the opportunity to do it. Um, we, we announced our annual subscription for the first time six weeks ago, like I said, massive uptake. And you get one year access to all our trading ideas and scans. Um, you get access to our premium weekend charting analysis. What you're currently watching at the moment is just my free oftentimes generic social media analysis that touches on charts that you guys have requested. Um, but what I also do for my clients and subscribers is provide uh, a basket of around 10 to 15 charts every single week that are premium charts that I expect that will probably move in the forthcoming week. And there's a massive difference between the two. You get one year access to a trading community if you need a second opinion on a chart, we offer that as well. But what we are doing with our Christmas special, just exactly the same as what we did with our Black Friday special, is we're going to give you free access to our technical analysis program that will show you and teach you how you can use technical analysis in a logical, systematic way that removes a lot of the nonsense that you've probably picked up along the, the way. Um, and it condenses things more towards a uh, time horizon for weeks to months rather than day trading. Um, now, like I said before at the start, obviously you know who I am now. I'm Sam um, and I'm registered with the CMT Association. 
hopefully you understand what that means that that's that's quite a big deal um, but I also run honeystocks.com a super no well-known website but the really cool thing about what I do at honeystocks.com is I have complete and open transparency to my work aside from the fact that, that obviously I post all my analysis in advance um, I'm not uh, one of the social media superstars that keeps going back and saying you could have done this, you could have done that, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? I have got a reputation for calling things in advance and for providing educated charting um, that's just helped so many of you over the last couple of years. Now, I log every single trade idea that I post to my group, my subscribers, so that the world can scrutinise that and see exactly what it is that I'm doing. Now, I don't know anybody else that does this. Um, it conforms to the code of ethics that, that I have to follow with the CMT Association. Um, you can see the date that I've posted a chart. You can see, obviously, the ticker, the company, the price that I've recommended it, um, what that stock has then gone on to done to do, and you know what your potential outcome could be. Now, what I would say is that a lot of my subscribers and clients have different um, methods from profiting in the markets. Some trade options, therefore, they're maybe not in the chart for, you know, two, three months, four months. Sometimes they'll be in for a month and obviously they just profit take along the way. But hopefully that gives you a bit of insight. I've got a very diverse group. A lot of my guys are accredited investors. Um, trading with lots and lots of capital, buying a lot of the underlying assets. But to the other side of things, we also have subscribers that are maybe trading with a bit less capital and looking to, to just kind of slowly build over time. So wherever you are, you know, we can probably help you in some way. Um, but this is really what my trade, trade alerts look like. A lot of you wonder and a lot of you ask me, well, what's the difference? And this is pretty much what I do guys um, so whenever I send out a trade alert this will be sent to your email inbox I also have my app um, I've got a very very professional setup um, I'm not asking you to join whatsapp groups I'm not asking you to um, you know act upon a chart at you know two minutes notice I provide a minimum of 12 hours notice for every single trade alert that I send out and this is really what it looks like obviously that was the Starbucks trade alert that went out around $81. But aside from that, I did touch on it before that I also provide charting analysis and charting requests. Now, this is a chart one of my guys asked about ARWR. He was thinking about exiting the position and I sent him this chart and just said, look, you know, bullish above this level. Now, obviously this was mid-September. Now, I'm not saying for one second that I called the move in ARWR. Absolutely not. This thing has been life changing for my client Chris. We're talking about cars being paid off, daughters paying off their cars. That's what the power of options can do for you if you get it right. Um, and obviously that chart was just part of the, the whole decision making process. ENPH is another one. Um, a lot of my guys were wondering what to do. This is a chart I provided and I think this is obviously up and running $25 now in the space of a month. So that's what it is that I do. And like I said, it's not for everyone. I think if you are wanting to get better at day trading, I probably can't help you. Um, I think if you want to get away from day trading, if you want to have a more logical approach to the market, maybe you want to accelerate your learning curve, maybe you just want to get better at technical analysis and kind of have that ongoing support, um, I would suggest for 500 bucks, it's probably a good investment, but you know, I'll leave that to you guys. Um, so like I said, that's what we can probably do. Um, Cause I know there's nothing worse from learning from losses and hunting around YouTube all day. It's frustrating. So if you do want to learn a new way, check out our website. There's going to be a link in the description for you to register your details if you are interested in joining. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to consider you. And um, yeah, hopefully you've got a lot of insight from this and 
please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a comment, let me know what tickers you like. Tell me all in the comments, it all helps with the algorithms. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and maybe I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much.